Uh, we're very honored this day today on the 30th of August to have a very special guest with us. It's King Kigeli V from Trahim Durba, King of Rwanda in exile, and we're very honored. Your Majesty, it's such an honor. Council, very pleased to meet you as well. And um, Your Majesty, we're truly honored to have you as our guest at Pop and Fresco Journal and uh, work that you have done in your life is carrying such an important message for the society and all our humanity and I know that you were helping and still helping people all over the world and uh, being, royal, uh, being born into a royal family or of Rwanda what memories do you have about your family, about your mother, about your father? Um, do you want me to translate first? Absolutely. Yeah, in my childhood, I was no more like other Rwandan children. I played with my friend and doing house uh, uh, activities with my sibling. We had an ordinary life for like other Rwandan children of uh, our time. Above all, my father wanted to behave like other children. He wanted us to play together with them. He invited the children for combined society groups, Utu, Tutsi, and Litwa, to be together with, with us. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, on the side of mom, uh, Mama was teaching me how to pray and uh, advising me and uh, explaining me how it's good to pray. Mm. When I was in the holidays or in the vacation, uh, I was always going to the mass with my mom. Only with your mom? Uh, that's how I have been educated to follow God up to now. Uh, she has done a good thing for me, and that uh, is really, uh, I remember everything because of her, and uh, the good things which I have done is because of her. Amazing. Mother's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, what do you think is the most important lesson your uh, brother, King Mutara, passed to you as to a future monarch before his mysterious death? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, King Mutara the third, he was not only my brother, but I appreciate dearly what he has done and how he educated me. And he, even when I was uh, working with the Belgian, he was coming on the weekend to visit mm. and to see how I am progressing. He was really concerned. Yeah, he was really concerned about it. And I was very open to him. Uh, and there was very open to him. And I was telling him as a really brother all the things which I was thinking and what I want and what I wish. I was uh, speaking very openly to him. And the secrets, you share secrets as well? Mm -hmm. 
I was so young that uh, <laughs> it was no, no secret between both of us. I was talking it just uh, like a young brother. Uh -huh. And I was too young in comparison of how he was all, uh, old. Oh, yeah. yeah so, so mm -hmm. um, by example, he has never revealed to me that I be the successor to him. Mm -hmm. But that's the secret. In Rwanda, we have a group of people are called Abiru. Yes. They are the one who are keeping the secret of the feature of the successor. Oh, amazing. Yeah. So they knew that I be educated on that way, but myself I don't knew. Oh. And they have never been told about it. And that is a secret which they have hid uh, to tell me. Very but <laughs> Niho Babu the Abibu, Abu Wasize, Zabu Man, Acheras, Bajoran, and Rashira. Up to the time when we were just assisting the burial, that's when they revealed the successor of the king, which is going to be buried. And that's the following the Rwandese culture. They give the name of the successor on the burial of the present king and that's when they came to say that is me and i was shocked to myself and people they have kept me by force and, and he was trying but he was tightened completely and they took him in front of people and in front of the government representative the Belgians. now anybody was and even the Belgium. Uh, the Belgian government don't know. Oh, they didn't know. That, no, that's a secret. Is a, is a uh, is a secret of the Rwandese people. That's the culture. Yeah, the successor is always uh, said on the burial of the present. That's one. It's when they reveal the name of the one who's going to be the king, and it's what they did for him. He was just nominated on the burial of his brother, and he was taken by force in front of the Belgian representative who were there. Which, because the Belgian, they were prepared to do a republic, and that's they even called that event coup d'état de Muima. Muima, that's the place where they have buried the Mutara. That's a Russian and they, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how they came to call it coup d'état de Mima, because it was against their will oh. and against the preparation of the Belgian government. That's yeah. Right. yeah, they keep that secret because of the security reason. Course. of the successor because if they came to know who is going to succeed being many brothers there is a jealousy yes. so he can be killed yes. he can be poisoned mm -hmm. they can do anything when sure. you know those who have the jealousy you know how it works that's history yeah and that's the reason they keep that as a secret that's very interesting <laughs> and um when you were forced into exile um you fled to Tanganyika and then other countries and ultimately arriving in uh, Washington DC. And how did you manage to escape Rwanda? Well, uh, I'm 
Okay, I started by going to Kinshasa mm -hmm. because uh, in 59 when the uh, uh, troubles started in my country, mm -hmm. I tried to make an arrangement with the Belgian, but uh, they knew what they were doing and they don't knew that they are the one who are, who are conducting mm -hmm. that event. Uh, first of all, uh, the resident, uh, uh, Anyway, I went to, go to the governor of Rwanda in Bujumbura mm -hmm. to tell him what is happening in the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was not willing to arrange the things because they were the one who were conducting the, the event. Mm -hmm. Then as the, the Doug Hammarskjöld, the, the General Secretary of the United Nations, mm -hmm. was passing to Kinshasa, mm -hmm. uh, and we were under uh, the League of United Nations. Oh, on that time, then I said, okay, once the Belgian, they are not arranging this problem, they are not stepping, stopping this event, better to go to tell the representative of the United Nations because we are under the League of United Nations. Mm -hmm. The governor of Rwanda has first refused even me to give me a passport to go to Kinshasa. But I pushed, I, I pushed until he gave me the passport and he allowed me to go to Kinshasa to meet the Secretary General. I find even that the flight was almost going. going. Yeah. But, okay. Yeah. But by chance. Mm -hmm. Even when I was already in the flight, mm -hmm. they sent the troop of paratroopers, Belgian paratroopers, mm -hmm. to stop the, the flight. But the pilot refused. He said, once I have made the engine, mm -hmm. I can't stop it. That's right. If you want of him, you have to, mm -hmm. to follow him to Kinshasa, mm -hmm. to send a telegram, so he will be back. OK, that's how he happened to go to Kinshasa. And that's how he came to meet Doug Hammarskjöld, the General Secretary of the United Nations. It's, it's like a... <laughs> Then he arranged with him mm -hmm. that you send him an email to invite him to the General Assembly in the United Nations mm -hmm. to explain the situation of Rwanda. Mm -hmm. And that's how I went in the, in the meantime. I went in Tanzania. In fact, I, was, I wanted to go back in Rwanda, but on that time, they published on the radio mm -hmm. that I am prohibited to come back in, the, in Rwanda. And that's how I went in Tanzania. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's I, how I started to be a refugee. So from Tanzania, I received an email inviting me mm -hmm. to United Nations. Mm -hmm. And I, that's how I went to the United Nations. Anyway, you find all the explanation on the paper. Of again. course, of course, but that's that's incredible story and uh, yeah. itself very very dramatic, and how it happened as well. Yeah, I, I I'm very very fascinated that you had to go through all of this. Yeah. Oh, uh, anyway, when you follow his life, <laughs> <laughs> it was really not a joke. No, no, it was no. a creature, and when you see. How many on that time? Because the whole of Africa was fighting for independence, yes. and most of those who have fought it, they have been executed. All of them is almost the only one who is, is staying now, who is alive. When you see his brother Mutara, you see Wagasore of Burundi, you see um, Mandela has been in prison, Kenyatta has been in prison, many others. Lumumba, Lumumba has been assassinated. Terrible. Huh? So. Which is, man, I'm not 
That's how we can really to believe God is God. God is God. Yeah, He's the one who has protected him when you see how many passed in front of him. And he was fighting for the same. Yeah, yeah. Himself, he doesn't. He considers that he hasn't done something special, mm-hmm. and he has others who has been done better, but all of them they passed away. It's amazing. So it's amazing to see that he's still alive. History. It's a it's a historical big. It's a yes. historical big yeah. historical figure. Yes. And, and it has made him to believe in God more than ever. More than ever. Yeah. More than ever. That is great. That is great. <laughs> and in uh, 1992, you was granted the political assignment, right, uh, a quote from the United States of America. Yeah. And uh, you, you also started to travel internationally. You were able to speak and talk about what happened and on behalf of Rwandan people as well. So what are the goals you wanted to achieve uh, by doing this important mission? Well, I was here, I know more America. What time you could get out when you're going down, and you could get a movie. I recall M. Way out with it. You shall cook your own it. No, teacher shall be your own. No, China, China, Yamba, you could be shabby. If you have a major chat, you call is it movies, the moon, the people of Brahom Ditch. It shall come with your own American. You call bags of Yaho, but I was saying you have a little electric. I have been all, all over the world, all corner where I can, just to explain the problems of the Rwandese people, why really they left their countries. <coughs> because of following the propaganda of the Belgium. They have made a wrong story, very long, uh, saying that they, and that's why they have created the problem of fighting among the tribes, which has not, never existed before. It was no effort among the tribes in Rwanda on the time when the king was there. That was started just when the Belgian, when we started for independence. That's when they started to confront each other and to make them fighting. And that is the reason why they have killed Mutara and they have uh, uh, taken away him mm-hmm. and they create the a republic. It's uh, funny when you see that Belgium is a kingdom mm-hmm. and they don't want a kingdom in our country and they create a republic. Mm-hmm. That's contradictory on the history. Right. If they wanted, they wished to make a good thing. They can do the same what they do in Belgium. In Belgium, they have, by example, two tribes, mm-hmm. Flemish and Wallon. Okay. And we have Hutu and Tutsi. Uh-huh. It's almost the same. It's the same. Why they keep their monarchy <laughs> and they don't want us to keep our monarchy? That's a very question mark. Yeah. The Mr. Rogist was a resident in Rwanda. Uh, he came first when he was telling me when in the country. I think it's on the side there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and he, he brought some files just asking me to sign for or uh, dismiss mm-hmm. all the chief and the Tutsi. And the, I asked him, why do I have to sign and dismiss them? Mm-hmm. He said, my government has sent me to take the Tutsi down and to put the Hutu on power. 
Wow. Uh, and, and he was surprised, but on the other hand, he told me, thank you very much to, uh, to inform me about that, because I was surprised to see why you are dismissing them. Mm -hmm. And if you want to dismiss, if you are in the mission of your government, that's up to you, not me. So I am not signing. Yes. Yeah, he refused, and that's the time when he went to see the governor in Bujumbura. Mm -hmm. And he told him, or to register, has told him that he's in the mission of uh, taking power from Tutsi and to give the power on Hutu. Uh, of course, uh, he was sub he was telling him, oh, that's a military it's language, a language. <laughs> <laughs> because he has no answer. No answer. Yeah. He said it's a military language. So that's how we came to know really what happened and what they are from. That. And that's why he wanted to go to inform the General Secretary of the United Nations. Yeah. And it's what he has explained to the United Nations General Assembly what is happening in Rwanda. And, uh, that's how the event of 59 came. And that's the time when he applied for independence to be totally separated with the Belgium. And people started to know and learn what was really right. happening. And it was a, a common activity of the whole Africa. They were asking for independence. Mm -hmm. They were fed up with the colonial people, what they were doing to them. Yes, mm. absolutely. And then uh, I also know that you were friends with the late South African president, Nelson Mandela, that the whole world is admiring as well. And uh, what were you, your specific memories, your maybe uh, intimate memories about him and you together? I was really a big friend of uh, Nelson Mandela of South Africa, and I appreciated him. I appreciated him. First of all, to see how he loves his people in his country. And he was a straightforward person, not going a zigzag. And he was telling what he wants and what he wish and what he wants to do to push his people to come up. And, and, he, and he was against the quarrel or the, the differences between people. He wanted always the people to understand each other and to live in their country like brothers, not to like a foreigners. With peace and Yeah, with peace and the harmony and to follow uh, the instructions of the government. And uh, did you spend a lot of time together? May I ask that question? We met for the first time when I was in Tanzania. Uh -huh. And that's when we came to sit together and to, and that I came to know him, and he explained what he's following. Because on that time we were both of us in exile. Yes. Yeah. So we had the common problem. <laughs> so we had to discuss some issue, uh -huh. and we were explaining each other what is happening to different countries, and which line we should follow. And you probably had a very deep understanding of each other situations. Yeah, it was allowing us exactly to make comparison of what is happening to this country and this country. We find that we have the common problem with the colonial people. And that's how we became strong and we have a common a fight. And that was make us stronger than together. to fight alone. I guess. Together, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, 
Would you still consider a return as a constitutional monarch of uh, Rwanda? And what should be different should you be returning to Rwanda? When I came on the throne, mm -hmm. I signed that I'll be a constitutional monarch. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wish to go back as a constitutional monarch mm -hmm. and uh, to follow the same rule. He doesn't change. He will remain the same and the same objective. And uh, Your Majesty, you, re you recently completed a trip to the United Kingdom with a birthday dinner sponsored uh, by International Academy for Genealogical and Heraldry Studies. And did you have a favorite part of the trip? And uh, what did you do on that specific trip? Uh, it was a very good remembrance, but uh, also a very good encouragement mm -hmm. to see that people they are still appreciating what I have been doing and what I am still doing even now for my people. Yes. And uh, to see people can appreciate mm -hmm. is not so often. You see where I have been traveling and uh, to have uh, such reception which he has had is very rare. Special. So he was so much pleased to see that at least there are some people who understand what he has done mm -hmm. and you appreciate because uh, now it is not everyone who knows or we appreciate what he's doing. Yeah, and he, he has made a poor person in the many countries wherever he has been traveling. But to see a big country like that one, recognizing what he has done yes. and appreciating is a very, very good thing. Yes. And he, it has given me first encouragement and a very big sign that the world is watching what is happening on the world. Changes, lots of changes. Yes. Yeah, and that's a big hope. <laughs> yeah. Hope for the better. Uh, you're currently a head of King Kigali Foundation, which is known all over the world. And uh, could you please tell us more about your organization and what work you're doing to the people that are listening to this interview? Mo Basio ko ufite foundation, ikiwa kwenye foundation, mo adusoma nenda iki kora ni chukua na na u kora na ni uki mzee mzee kuchinza, ukute ya. The King Kigali Foundation, na itanga ni kwenye ina milioni ya milioni, milioni na kama, milioni na kama, jina wa baishinze, baishinga kwenye ngo, ukona inje mule kizuza, na inje profit bila bosi, na inje fasha kwa. Ba bimfu jamu mbwanda na ba nivari hands mujere kama shuli ni niaba kavalgua i juu juu ya sana ni jambo jamu jambo bana na masuala ni jambo bahari wajira ni zawa ya na na boka jenga boka pizza house. I have that the Kingi Kigeri Foundation. I started with it just there from 1994. Oh, a while, yes. Ah, it's long time. I what is the King Kigeri Foundation is there just to help Rwandese people wherever they are on the world, especially all types of children, orphans, widow, and the old people, all type of people, all refugees, wherever they are. So they is helping for education, is helping for medical problems. Whatever we can do, that's what the the role of King Kigiri Foundation is it to help the Rwandese people, especially those who are outside of Rwanda because there is no help and it is not all category. So we are trying wherever we can and we are trying to get some funds up and down to try to help all those people who, are not, who don't have any uh, income, who don't have any uh, means 
to see how they can survive. Yeah. He's so much pleased, though he's not in his country, but he's much pleased when he sees that he can help still his people, even when he's poor himself, but he can get the fund to help those people who are poor like him. But you are very rich inside. Yeah, that's really around my heart. When I see that I can help my people, I became rich. Yes. yes. When I see some orphans or some uh, children who are suffering who don't have any help, or to see the widow who has lost their husband, or the people have lost their wives, or people have lost their children, or their families. Mm -hmm. I am so sad to see them just struggling outside. Yes. That's true. And um, uh, Rwanda is also known for its culture, art, music, and very, very creative people. So uh, how are you managing to bring this culture into the public eye so people from other cultures, from other parts of the world also know uh, and your cu culture, people from Rwanda known by international community? Mufite kuchire ili ili inyishi anze kujangu menye kani. Che chete chete kwa zaidi kifite kani yalo mwa jaba zangu mwa yuko kwa na hani. Aliku che mungu fite mamo tuko mo kwa zaidi afan mkuu na kujangu ba tu mire baaze ba bikole itawanda onchi chini mukubali ako chete chete kwa zaidi kifite kani. Ah, I have that idea since long time, but. The problem currently is the fund to make activity. But on the program, we have that uh, point that you have also to show our culture. We know that our culture is very beautiful, is very rich. We are very rich in that culture, but we are still struggling to get enough fund to put the activities up and down all corners, all country where we have the Rwandese people. And they are ready any time we find the funds that we can make the activities all over the world. Hopefully it will happen mm -hmm. very, very soon. Oh, very good. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, I personally think it's uh, an amazing, amazing way of enriching people in your traditions and uh, show them about your country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, and uh, what is your favorite book? Igitabo yungu kunda chane niki. Oh, ti. Ti chane chane. Yunga kunda mimi toja istuari. Kani ma aliko chane chane. Ichi ni zamu ma bibria ibi magabo yima na yimu. Ila shimi chacha. I like many books with the history, but especially. When I see the Bible, Bible. and to follow yeah. what information they are giving is very, very interesting. And uh, what is the most key factor that you found in the Bible? What is your favorite verse or you think is the most important to you? Well, my question uh, the best is love. love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, he has been the uh, the land in Jerusalem 
the Holy Land of Jerusalem. He visited the whole, even the uh, uh, Jean Baptiste, who is his patron. Mm -hmm. He went to see his uh, where he was buried. Mm -hmm. It was a Catholic church built on that uh, grave. And later on, it became a Muslim oh. in Damascus. In Damascus. Yeah, so he went in to see purposely Jean Baptiste's grave. Yeah. He did. Yes. How was, was it? How was it? Oh, it's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so much that yeah. you know, to see his patron, uh, where he was buried, mm -hmm. and to follow his story. And he was a special uh, happy to see that he went on the grave where Jesus was buried. Special. And he entered even in, inside the grave. He did. Yes. He was able to. He, yes, he was. He went on the he, on the knees. To, oh yes. my goodness! He, yes. he entered on the knees. Yeah. He went. He, he, he went inside. To yeah. The grave. Mm. He was thinking that uh, since a long time, but uh, he realized he came to enter in that grave. And he went to see where uh, John Baptist was baptizing Jesus. Yes. And he entered in that water. Did. Yes, and the general who was there, oh. he threw the water on his head, <laughs> oh like John has done to, <laughs> to, to, Jesus. to Jesus. Jesus. Exactly, the same ceremony he has made. That is some special coincidence. Yes, <laughs> and that uh, that's why he's always remembering that trip he went on the Holy, the Holy Land. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. He went to see the mountain Sinai, where the uh, uh, evil mm -hmm. took Jesus. Mm -hmm. And he went on the top of the <laughs> on the very top. Yeah, yeah. on the very top. Yes. <laughs> yes. And he told him, Okay, now you can fall. If you are a real god, now the angel will <laughs> come <laughs> to, to take you. He went to see that place. So he has seen all the same. <laughs> and, and when Jesus told him, is he uh, prohibited to try to make the to turn the the the, uh, the king of God, how may I say that? Uh, the Lord, the King of God. Yeah. The Son of God. Uh, the Son of the God. Son of God. Yeah. yeah. Don't try to tell the wrong things to the Son of God. Yes. Yeah. So he followed the whole story on the Holy Land, and he went to where he was born in Bethlehem. Yeah. That's incredible. That's so, very special. Very special. And um, what is your favorite time of the year? Uh, yeah, chao, it is a mungaka. Nemo yaime. Yeah, chao, it is a mungaka. Nemo ya mukwe kwezi. Mvuka kwanje. Oh, ya mo arabu dango. Yeye wengo wishi mira. Mungaka. Oh, ti chani chani hundi kile cha Christmas. My uh, my favorite. Time is the Christmas time. Christmas time. Is very exciting. But it's beautiful. And uh, what is your the most memorable day in your life that happened, or uh, mm. that you always remember? The memory. The uh, me most memorable uh, day of your life. Go. Mo 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 
igihe wibuka kiza ni iki Oh oh gihe nibuka kiza no ni gihe ko munarya turya turi ku na papa turi muri exercise muri kongo ni kwa bajaji tujye na namuri ibintu ati subeni ya muntu ati ah aya mu always remembering where i ever am the time where we were in exercise with my father in the Congo, when we were just walking all around, and I never forget that time. And when he was making a walk, he always calling him to accompany him. And his, the father was always calling him to come with him, even though others were staying. And he was buying me the small things. And when we were coming back, all my brothers were coming to ask me, Oh, what he has bought for you? He <laughs> yeah. He wanted to know. <laughs> And uh, what do you think the world can learn from Rwandan genocide and what could be done differently in the future for Rwanda in order to see the country grow and flourish and develop into an amazing and cultural society as it was before and even more so? Rugarure ubukiza bwarwo kongere mu bigiro gukiza cyane that's a very interesting question kuko cyo mbibonye biri yanteye agahinda cyane kindi cyababaje nuko namaze gihe ki gitoye ku plan zange nari mfite nanze kuza ziza ku kitanga when i saw what happened in my country i was so sad because I have just made a short time in my country mm -hmm. and what I was planning has been broken from the beginning. Now, you know, you know, you know, this man, you know, have a change, of course, you know, 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 as I have been in exile for a long time, I have learned a lot and I have been in different countries and visiting others. I think, I hope that in my idea, I would change the whole country, especially, especially mm -hmm. to reunite the spirit of one of people, to become again one person in that country, and to become, or to come back, to be together, to be brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. and not to be divided anymore. And that is the first thing which I will try mm -hmm. to surprise the whole country not to see a difference among the people. No. no. Same one. To be only one father among his children. Mm -hmm. And not to make a difference among the children. People are all connected. All connected, all brothers and sisters. Yeah. And above all of them to make them understanding that above all god is there and is the one who is protecting them and is the one who is enabling them to do anything they want to do so to take god in the first line and to work together and to obey what god has said Yes, oh, it's so true. It is so, so true. I so agree with you. And um, uh, when you're alone uh, and 
what is your way of spending time when you're all alone? Like, what would you prefer to do when you're with yourself? Because I know a lot of people when they stay alone and they they have a moment, they have thoughts, they do, they they read or what would what would be your favorite time spending or how would you spend your time when you're alone? Uye uliwe nyeme, ije chao jikole shuke, ichukura uva chikuri kumete ma, iuliwe nyeme nchi. Oche chani chani, munda kukuri kena ifunuzi mbusenga. No, chini kani ga asenye la ijeho chani, mchezaji mwenye mwenye zekuri. Iteka kwa shingi ma. When I am alone, I am always thinking about my country, the situation where they are. The second thing, conduct, mm -hmm. I play God mm -hmm. to protect my country and my people. Mm -hmm. you, which is and to help them to come back on the reality mm -hmm. and to come back on the unity mm -hmm. of the country. Mm -hmm. And the is happening so many times mm -hmm. when I see how they are suffering in the country. Mm -hmm. I am always crying in front of God to see why those people they are suffering, mm -hmm. why those people they are not protected. And I am always praying on God to bring back peace in that country. What pe does peace mean to you? What? what does peace mean to you? What is peace to your understanding? Amahoro uvuga na mahoro mezate. Na mahoro ya kushira hamu. Na mahoro ya kuminyamu yiku kukari chavo yuko wosara mavani. Mitagira ngo uyusu mvani machaniche nga sangabaya tata na mwakaza na uvulja wakuza na konfizi hagati ya. Hariko mwasara ina mwibafashi wa shira hamu Peace, uh, the peace I want in the country is a peace from God. To know that they are all brothers and sisters, the country is theirs, all of them. No one is above another one. All of them, they are equal in the same country. And they are all brothers they have to work together without separating without pushing one behind is their land they have to use it all of them the same way and to respect each other yes 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 I don't understand why there are so many divisions up to now. They are in the same country. It's theirs, all of them. No one is above another one. They are equal. And you have the same language, the same culture. Why there is so much difference? Normally, it is even favored. Because to have the same language, same culture, it's a favor God has given them. Why they don't use that? True. Yeah. And to understand each other mm -hmm. and to feel that no one is above another one. So they are all equal in the same land. They have to uh, live in that land altogether. Not saying this can do this, that one, no. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. They are all equal. How do you feel about today's society as talking about being equal and everything else and its development? What do you think could be done in order to have peace and clean environment? Because we know that now the planet is under a lot of pressure.
Ijo ada buat cari untuk kena ni je. Ia cuma dia sih. Cuma dia cuma dia pun tak dia ambil. Abi cium tu pun dia kena. Yang mau dia kena mau musuh berat juga. Everything is possible when there is a peace. And that the first thing to look for is to create peace in that country because there is no peace at all. There is jealousy. There are a lot of things which are making troubles. Is to stop and to make them understanding, to preach all the people living in that country and those even who are outside that they are all the same. They are all equal, so they don't have to discriminate each other. It's enough out there for everybody. Yeah. Is enough, enough is enough. Yeah. What has been done is enough. It's a kind of guitar, guys. It's more of a chip. No corner, Uruji, Kuruja, Vasana. If you look at the music, Bakaja, what a chair in Kugarin. Vasana, what a matquara, and me, could be a son. The poor think we consider our old people. Is it to see that the youth has been misled? And they are coming with the new bad things because they have never known the reality of the things. So they need old people to be together with them and to indicate them what must be done. Show them the character, show them the behavior of the innocent people and to respect each other. But with the bad education they have been given, that's what's making wrong all the things. They have been misled, yeah. so there is no way. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, who was your role model, or who is your role model uh, in life, and why? I bet. Who is the role model? Role model of uh, Ro uh, role model. model in life. Well, what do you mean? Role model. It's a person that inspired you and always uh, uh, influenced your goodness in your heart and. Uh, uh, was able to give you good advice and you always, uh, like for example, God is role model to everybody or you have a person that was your role model in particular. That is best advisor is God. Yes. Before doing anything, I am praying. And asking him, please direct me the right way. Yeah. And uh, what would be your personal message to people uh, out there and all our international community and uh, all countries all over the world? Ngo message wa bagira bantu bari hanze bose ni bihugu biri hanze byose ngo ni eh message nuko bose bari hanze mare ni bihugu ko bya byose bya bimwe ntambara bica ba bica na nice bagagenda abasiga abana babo nabagore ubasanga ari umwana ara pesa ari mu bintu itari byiza Bifujara kwa vile kwa ichochi ni mungu sana na kichi chigashi, abantu waga sugu na mungu kujia, abantu waga kumi, ahovari, gidi huu ikitara bidira, chikabu na kumi, amuzi zaidi mji huche, chini ni kwa kwa. Considering what happened on the world war, outside, many things have happened, many war has happened, many killing has happened. What I can ask it to all human beings is to be realistic, to think about others, to see the past was not good, and to try to correct, to make it better than it has been before, to see, to avoid all fighting, all war, which they are on the whole world, and to try to work all together as brothers and to pray God, and to do everything with God. Absolutely. Yeah. And to conclude our amazing interview, what are your three wishes? 
ngo ibyifuzo byawe bitatu ngo nibiki bitatu ibyifuzo byanjye eh wari wabivuza ngaho eh no kugira ngo gihugu cyanyu kiyo kiza nabantu bahindiwe bico ukunjika mu tagira mu cyane cyane no kwicana kumwe na marafu ibyo bigahita hakaza amaho the three wishes is it to see my land my homeland to be in success to bring back peace among my people and the harmony in a surviving in the country and to go back inside the country and i wish you the most wonderful things happen <laughs> to come and we're so grateful that we're here today with you and we can spread this message of peace from you and uh, your register thank you kindly and counselor we're truly honored to have this interview with you thank you very much ngo arishimye cyane kuba twabaye kumwe ngo nicyo cyamuzanye kugira ngo message yawe azaye yumvishe isi yose ati no nabushimye kugira ngo nge icyo gitegereza cyo kumukuza kumubaza and is very thankful also to have decided to come to make this interview because he's very happy to advise the whole world about his thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're very grateful. 